So Jamal Nyas here with the wig removal service CEO, Louis Lee Scott. It wasn't quite the wig removal service last time because you took a body last time with yeah, a yeah. disgusting teep kick to the body. First of all, how are you feeling after that? And I know you've mentioned off camera, you've got a bit of an, an injury, haven't you? Yeah, I've got, you know, um, got like a few little niggles from the fights. Nothing, nothing that can't be sorted soon. So hopefully we'll be back in the cage soon as, yeah. And just after that win as well at Cage Steel, how are you feeling after that? 100% finish rate as a professional and, uh, you know, you just keep upping the game in terms of your kicking ability. We know you can strike with your hands as well, but your feet is where it's at, isn't it, man? Body, head, wherever. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm really settling into my game now. You know, like... My first few pro fights, I was, I was getting the finishes, but I wasn't happy with the finishes, you know what I mean? Like, I know it sounds mad, but I want that, that pitch-perfect knockout every right. time, like like every fighter does. Um, and I feel like I know where to find it now. You know, I know where to find my finishes, so... Mm. The thing with you as well, which I think is insane, is you also DJ alongside fighting, which is, like, you're going to have to pick a lane sooner or later because the way that you're progressing as a fighter is incredible. And I'm thinking, how has he gone from fighting in the cage then doing an all-night rave? Like, you're going to have to pick cage or rave sooner or later. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not playing as many sets now, to be honest. It's like an hard thing to balance more just because of the, the late nights. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's... I love it and it's a laugh and I sort of like most most of my mates are in that scene with music and stuff but yeah. I can't be DJ until four, five, six in the morning yeah. and then come training on a Monday so it's like I'll, I'll do you know I'll play a few sets after I've fought and stuff but um, yeah fight fighting's the way forward. I bet Carl's telling you to pack it in, isn't he? I bet he's saying get rid of them late nights now. You need to be more disciplined or is he encouraging it? Fair, Carl, <laughs> Carl's into it, you know. Carl used to have a nightclub. Um, which, not yeah, that. yeah, not, not many people do, mate. He's done every everything you can in life, that guy, oh. mate. So yeah, yeah, that's that's sort of how, where me and Cal sort of clicked, I think, like in the beginning, because we're both into music right. and stuff, you know. Right. So maybe we could have a Manchester top team DJ nightclub subdivision. Yeah, maybe yeah. turn this into a rave yeah, in here after one of the fights. Manchester top <laughs> raves coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that PFL knockout because that was where the wig removal thing came from with the gum shield which I thought was really clever from you whenever a fighter sets a catchphrase or anything like that like a hashtag it always goes down well and you know that went down really well and what a way to announce yourself on the world stage brutal head kick knockout it was in the first couple of minutes of the fight was it yeah. within the first minute yeah so just absolutely ridiculous so talk to me about what that experience was like you know being in front of the camera the spotlight all week it was something that you've not experienced to that degree before uh, with a promotion like PFL, what was that experience like? And then to just get it as emphatic as that, it can't get any better than that, can it? No, it was were really good, mate. You know, I, I enjoyed the the big show experience. You get treated like a, a proper athlete. Do you know what I mean? You're not just turning up to a show, um, just and have, having a fight. You're getting looked after all week. You know, doing doing the media stuff is great. Yeah, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Um, so. And as well, the 21 second finish, you can't, you can't get better than that, can you? No, you really can't. You really can't. Even you that sort of beat yourself up a bit and want that picture perfect knockout, was that a picture perfect one for yourself? Was that your favourite one of your career so far? Yeah, de definitely the best finish I've had. Um, it's, it's mad because most fighters will agree, you, you're never really happy with a fight like that. For, you're looking from the outside, you think, oh, you, you know, 21 second knockout, nothing better, but. After fight, I was like, oh, well, I don't feel like I've had a fight now. You know, it was it was the best buzz ever. I, I can't lie, like, as you've seen, I, I was shouting some... You're not responsible for the first minute after you fight, I don't think, because I was screaming <laughs> some ridiculous things at that camera. Well, Lewis does the same after. thing, doesn't yeah. he? Lewis yeah, McGillan yeah. says all sorts of crazy stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, it's you mad that... The, the stuff that you were saying? <laughs> well, yeah, um, for, luckily, you can't really hear it on camera, but... I just thought I were a gangster for about five <laughs> seconds. I'm like, yeah, yeah, come on, they're Manchester top team. I think um, I think I turned into Kane Musa. That's what it was. I turned into Kane Musa for about 20 seconds. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. <laughs> your your kicking game, like we mentioned, is ridiculous. And I know you did some work with Liam Harrison um, for quite some time a few years ago. Same city as you, Leeds. Is that a massive influence on your fighting style and do you still keep in contact today as well? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I got my style from Liam. Um, I learned a lot, like all, all my little tricks I've got are Liam's tricks, you know what I mean? Like he, he, he um, gave me most of my game and then when I've, I've been at AVT and top team, 
it's like rounded it all into MMA rather than it just being Thai. But um, yeah, I still chat to Liam and stuff. I don't get as much work with him in now. With him now, obviously, being over in Manchester, and he's a super busy guy now. You know, in the last few years, he's blown up. Ev everyone knows who Liam Harris is now, yeah. don't they? Everyone knows who he is. So yeah, I want to see that fight between Liam and Jonathan Haggerty in the UK. And he, I know he even won championship discussed maybe doing it at Wembley Stadium, which they're gonna have to stack that card if they want to sell that. But that has to happen over here. Do you see that fight happening? Yeah, I can see it happening. L Liam will fight anyone. He's, he's not. He's never looking for an easy fight, you know. Um, so I can see that fight happening. Just li obviously, Liam's injured at the minute. We'll we'll see how he is when he's back in training properly. And just in terms of PFL, I know we had a little chat off camera before this interview. But can you just go into what the situation is with them? Because we've seen that your teammate Lewis McGrillan has got a contract. What's the situation with yourself? Because everyone wants to see you back in there with PFL Europe. Yeah, at this minute the situation is nothing. I've not really, I've not really made me an offer, so um, which I think is kind of mad considering yeah. it were. At the t I don't know if it still is now, but at that point, I think it was the fastest knockout on PFL. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if they want to make me an offer, then make me an offer, mate. But um, really, I don't, I don't know if PFL is the one for me because I, I like to elbow. You know, and with, with their rule set, there's no elbows. So that's like, a, a, you know, it's a large chunk of my game. And it's a thing that people forget, isn't it? Like, we can talk about the bright lights, the TV contracts they've got, but... Uh, the elbows, a lack of that is such a big thing for fighters, isn't it? Like, that's one of your key aspects of your game that we've seen throughout your career. And to negate that and take that away from your training camp, that must have been pretty crazy last time. You drilling no elbows, taking something away, that must have been crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was because, like, I thought the, um, the Irish lad there, Tormann, got that's why I lost my eyebrow. Uh, <laughs> you're right there, nice one, mate. <laughs> Um, and after that fight, I like, I need to start using elbows in training more because obviously throw elbows in fights and on the pads, but not many gyms will spar with elbows. So we started sparring with elbow pads on more. Um, and really quick, quickly, I built it into my game. Um, had another fight, and then the fight after that, it's like, oh, you're not elbowing again now. So I, it was like working the other way, trying to drill it out of me. Because even, even in the warm up for that fight, um, I was like touching out with Lofty. Um, and it's just a reaction, you know, we're like throwing elbows and we're like, fucking hell, don't do that in the fight. But it didn't go long enough for it to happen, so it didn't really matter. Could you see people accidentally throw a knee to a grounded opponent, which is stupid because in near enough every Western organisation, that's not allowed. But elbows, it's just, I, I feel for you, man, having yeah. to learn how to not do something. But we were talking as well, so I know yourself and Callum Connor are potentially fighting on a massive promotion that's going to be held in Manchester late this year. Can you tell people that are watching what that could possibly be? Uh, yeah, so I got the. I've, I've had some contact with the the Anthony Pettis fighting championships. I'd I'd love to be on that show. You know, um, big arena in Manchester. Obviously, Pettis being a massive name. Everyone, everyone that's into M MMA knows who Pettis yeah. is. You know, so it'd be a great opportunity. Yeah. Similar style to yourself as well. Very kick heavy. Yeah. Would you, if you get on that card, do you want to have? A session with him, maybe even here at Manchester Top Team. That'd be crazy to see you guys have a session together. Yeah, that that'd be sick, mate. Obviously, one of the best kickers in MMA history, yeah. and it's like a guy I've watched a lot of uh, coming coming up. You know, trying to pick skills out of his game. So definitely. In terms of, you know, we mentioned Liam Harrison was a massive influence on your kick heavy style, but with the likes of Edson Barbosa for yourself growing up, who else like Jose Aldo? those kick heavy guys who were the guys that you looked up to growing up from um, a fighting style perspective interesting question you know what it, for a, a long time it were Aldo like yeah. when I when I was younger um you know an amateur and stuff Aldo, Aldo's always been one of my favorite fighters just because he's he's got a, a I'd say he's got a, a Thai sort of style with, with better footwork and good take down defense yeah do you know so yeah I, I, Aldo was a guy for a long time I, I, I do like my front foot guys like Peter Yan um um, until recently was the guy do you know what yeah. I mean as well, as well. so P Pete Yan's a guy I've always liked watching like um, I like guys with a technical style you know thinkers have got good footwork brilliant and in terms of the ultimate goal is the ultimate goal still for yourself the UFC just like it is for everyone else in this gym yeah 100% mate the UFC champion it's got to be the goal or what's the point yeah. if you don't want to be the best I don't see any point So you're only 23 years old do you have like a, a target date of when that's going to happen or do you not put pressure on and say it's going to happen when I'm ready for it? Uh, yeah, there's, I, don't, I don't like to. I used to think that like, oh, I want to be in UFC by the time I'm 23 or yeah. I've got to do it by this. But I think it 
it's pressure you, you don't need because it's going to happen when it's going to happen. I've just got to focus on myself, getting, make sure I'm getting better every day, um, you know, looking after myself, staying in the gym and th that's it and then it comes with that. So. 100%. As long as you keep performing in the way that you have, like we've seen it with Lerone as well, that just happened out of nowhere and he's had such a rapid progression. I was speaking to him before from beginning on the FCC cards in 2017 to where he is now it's absolutely insane I'm sure three four years time we'll be talking the likes of yourself Callum Connor Lewis McGrillan it's going to be crazy in this gym in about three four years time isn't it can you envision that very clearly in your head what it's going to be like yeah I can see it mate like um I remember Pav were talking about it before I can't remember I'm not I'm not that into basketball he said one of the, I might have been the late, I'm not going to say it because I don't know about it, do you know <laughs> what I mean? Me man, I wouldn't um, get it either. Yeah, he was saying he was like, you know, one of them teams looking now, people are going to talk about us in years, I think, I know, I know it's like sounds big-headed, but I think we're going to be one of them teams that like, fucking hell, remember Manchester top team? Yeah. Like, all, like you know, there's never been um, a two, two champions from England at the same time, and I think yeah. we could be the the first team to do that, where we have, you know, champions in, in um, multiple divisions. 100%. Who is your favourite person to spar from this gym, would you say? Who would you have the most fun with? Lewis. Yeah, Lewis, yeah, yeah. Lewis. Me and Lewis have six spars. I really enjoy sparring Lewis because we'll go at it, but you know we don't let his egos get involved yeah. um, to where we're having a fight and we're mates and we help each other get better every spar, I think. You know, it's like, it's like um, it comes like a game of chess because I'll know he's going to throw that and then I'll slip and I'll throw this, but he knows I'm going to go that and it ends up with like seven layers in, do you know what I mean? Trying to land on each other, so it's, it's, it's good. Because he's, he said before, when I've done a joint interview with you both, he said that your kicks, your body kicks are disgusting, which is very clear. How hard does he hit in sparring? Um, not, I wouldn't say it's 100% as he hits in fights, but he fucking hits hard, mate. <laughs> he is the hardest hitting small guy I've ever sparred with, I think. It's like, I don't know, it's like, some something different, something different, mate. That kid's got in his hands, but yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, and then they get in fights, and no one feels like they hit hard because I'm sparring with him. I'm like, I'll get caught with a shot. I'm like, oh, is that it? You know what I mean? When you've been sparring with, with guys with that much power, so it's it's good to have other top fighters around you for that reason. 100%. And just when you guys hang out outside of the gym, I presume you're all very close friends. Do you just always constantly talk and think about fighting? Do you actually find it very difficult to switch off? Yeah, 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 de definitely. I, I think that sometimes when, um, because we spend time with fighters all the time, you know, we're, we're in the gym all day, um, we'll chill together. When the, Sometimes when I'll, I'll go see my mates, I'm like, what do I normally talk about with normal people? Yeah, do you yeah. know, it's like, yeah. I feel like an, an asshole just talking about fighting all the time. Like, oh, do you know this? Have you seen this guy? What do you think to this? Um, but yeah, it, bec it becomes all your life. Do you know, there's, there's nothing else you can do apart from fighting. Is it a healthy obsession for you? Because I know, you know, we had the joke about the DJ thing, but that's at least a good distraction because you sometimes you can get too engulfed in one thing and you do need to switch off. Yeah. And like, do you fe feel like you've got that locked? You have a way of completely switching your mind off for maybe even two hours a day, yeah, yeah. if that's good enough for you. Yeah, yeah, that's like, on a weekend, me and, me and my mates will, um, when I go out, because I, like, I stay in Manchester for a week and then sometimes I'll go back to Leeds on a weekend, so I'll go see my mates at, um, like, Make Tunes and DJ and I'll, we'll go, go have a mix in the studio and like, like you say, it's good to take your mind off it for a bit and then I'm back up and I'm switched on from Mondays, so. 100%. Final one, so the Anthony Pettis Fighting Championships event, looking like October I think you guys mentioned are you looking to get a fight in after that before the end of the year so maybe two fights before the end of the year as well yeah that, that's the plan too even three fights if I can I, I want to stay as busy as possible now because um, I've had like the last few years I've had a few injuries where I've had months and months out um, and then it's building back up getting back into shape but the more I can stay in shape and just keep fighting the better